Now, let me see. Hello, everybody. I don't know whether this is streaming live yet. Let me just see. I'll have a peep and see what's going on. Okay. Meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. That's handy. So, oh, hang on. I heard a noise. That's always a good sign to just bear with me while I... <laughs> it's not quite time to start yet. My special guest is waiting in the wings. Probably, probably be late. So just bear with me while I tune into my Facebook here and see what's going on. Okay. If anybody can see this, if they could send a message. Oh, hang on. Michelle Good, she's here. That's good. Let me see. Hello, Michelle. Nice to see you. What's this? A message from a message from the universe. Hang on. Do 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 do. Right. So I'm going to plop that on there. Plop that on there. Okay. Also, I'm going to share it to somewhere else. There we are. There we are. Let's share it to there. Mm-hmm. Now, what I need to do now is very cleverly, I need to just find some ah people. Ah, Hilda Jones. Hello, Hilda. Seanan Moulon. Shared TFN. That makes two of us, darling. <laughs> Jake, I am mate. Nice to see you. Marie Walters. How do you do? Ooh, Michelle Good, we're live. Ernie, nice to see you. Nice to see you. So I'm just waiting now for um, my surprise, a really big surprise guest. Um, a person who could be only well described as fluid in all aspects. Yes. Somebody who reverberates between the two poles and never knows quite which way to turn. That's the only way I can describe this guest. And all I'm doing now is waiting for this guest to click on the Zoom link. Uh huh. Hang on. I'm not quite sure. I've sent it to you. So let me send it again. Bear with me, chaps. Strange. Okay. Just bear with me while I come out of here. And then go to here. Do that there. Do that there. There we are. Things are looking up. Can you tell I'm not very professional? <laughs> there we are. Do, 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 do. Just sing to yourselves while you're waiting, chaps. And you We'll probably have some of that coming on soon as well. Let me see. So, I'm just waiting now for our guest to appear. <laughs> oh. 
Why is it that nothing can ever go smoothly for me? Am I cursed? Is it karma? Is it some sort of mysterious plague that's reappearing from eons ago to stop my attempt to climb Jacob's ladder, if there is such a thing? Hang on. Let me once again... Oh, oh, hang on. The divine feminine aspect of Einstein is here. <laughs> Brother, can you hear me? I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. The, the, How do you do, my boy? How are you on this auspicious day? The feminine counterpart of Einstein has appeared. <laughs> Jolly good. You look very shiny today. Have you been doing good things? Uh, well, yeah, just uh, going down the, uh, you know, the river of ascension, you know, without choice. <laughs> Have you felt any sort of um, different or peculiar energies today at all? Because I certainly have. I've not been able to um, to focus on anything at all today, clearly. Mm, yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see. Two mornings ago at 4 a.m., I think it started. And then all that day, some of yesterday and then today. Yeah, like in the stomach and yeah, in the body. But I haven't felt... Oh, I, I, yeah, I'm like you. I can't think of anything, you know, right. like what's yeah. coming to me and stuff. I'm, uh, I don't normally go into all this uh, in three days time. There's going to be a massive frequency change and all this sort of stuff. You know, my view is a bit like yours, actually, because I've listened to you for a long time now is I just take what comes and work with what's right in front of me now. You know, it's all very, very interesting to listen to all these sort of prophecies and, and all that sort of business. But I tend yeah. that if I, if I hook too deeply into that sort of stuff, I get taken away with it, really. So, you know, my, my view is, you know, I just work one day at a time with a clean sheet and just deal with whatever emotional state that I'm in to the best of my ability. What do you think? That's about good. That? That's good advice, because I think a lot of us are waking up with poop on our sheets in the mornings. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Well, why have you gone to that depth of conversation already? It's only early. <laughs> <laughs> because the, uh, uh, I don't know, man, the energies, I, I, I came into the RV and the, and the smoke alarms, or the, the uh, propane gas is going off, or the alarm for it. <clears throat> I think it just needs a battery. But it's but it's screwed into the floor, and I got to get a tool and unscrew it. So you're going to hear it from time to time. I put a pillow over it. Right, right. I I um I hate all that fiddly stuff. That's what seems to get me. I can deal with all the big mm. stuff, the massive disasters, and all that sort of business. Mm. It's the shitty little tiddly things that really frustrate and annoy, and annoy me. You know, because I don't know about you, but I don't think I've quite reached enlightenment yet. Whatever that means. No. You know? <laughs> me, me either i did four shows yesterday and I, I just like barely made it like i could i could totally go into my body during the show and then after the shows i was like down and then i'd get back up and do another one and yesterday was really and, and you know uh, somebody put up a maybe it was four o'clock yesterday morning somebody put up an uh, a post and it four hours before they said the human spiked to a record level so i don't know i don't even pay attention to that stuff either it's just as reference points i guess no, I don't. I saw I saw those two as well. And um, my feeling, Todd, is that, yeah, it's very turbulent. The waves are up and down. You know, it's, it's just basically like we've said before, learning to surf the emotional waves, the highs and the lows. And the better we get at surfing these emotional waves, then the more balance we get, the more clarity of mind, the more understanding comes to us. And so we get a bigger picture of what's going on. That's where I'm up to. And from time to time. No, no, no more than from time to time i haven't got a clue what anything's about you know i i hear people and um part of me thinks i wonder if they're enlightened right i wonder what stage of the ladder they're on i wonder what dimension they're operating from and then some other part of me says joe shut up just get on with it go and find your joy and do more of that my boy you know Todd, right. let me ask you a serious question what mm -hmm. what's meant by quantum what's this what is this quantum consciousness that people go on about? I think I understand sometimes and other times I don't really understand. So 
Can I have your viewpoint on that, please? <laughs> what is quantum consciousness? Yeah. That's the first time I've ever really heard it, I think, that I can recall. Uh, I've heard, you know, like quantum, you know, it's like quantum manifestors and quantum time versus linear time. I don't. I think quantum, to me, you know, represents like, um you know everything's everything's uh different you know it's not just linear is is you know whatever replace linear call it quantum time uh i think uh, for me the biggest part is the way that we that as much information as we can take in now compared to five years ago or 10 years ago I mean, if you look at babies you know like you know i mean in, in europe you're a, a medical guy you know the 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 uh amount of data that a that a child takes in, you know, I mean, I've seen like studies on it, like five years old, it's like 50,000 things a day. And then, and it keeps going up and then it starts to drop at 18. But to me, it's like, everybody's learning at that baby warp speed. So, and then being able to process it and function, even though we're half on our ass most of the time, yeah. uh, to me, I guess that's kind of what quantum quantum is, or at least the transition into quantum. I don't, I don't know that we're in full blown quantum yet. So, so another question, Right, because I want to put you on the spot a bit tonight because you know you do wax lyrical sometimes, right? I wax wax what? Wax Political? lyrical, you know, you saw oh you know, blag, you know what we call it blagging really, you know. Lyrical. <laughs> lyrical. Flying by the seat of your pants, you know that one. <laughs> I should I should have listened to more Beatles videos uh, this have. morning. So I could have got the Liverpool accent down. Yeah, sorry, mate. Sorry. I'll try no, and I talk in a more sort of hot diggity no. doodah, you know. Yeah, that sounds like George. George Harrison uh, or John Lennon. No, I like the Liverpool accent. Yeah, go ahead and put me on the spot. Let's do it. I'm totally okay. discombobulated. So this okay. is Okay, so 3D, I can get my head around that. 5D, I sort of understand what that means. What the hell's 4D to you? Oh, well, you know, I, I used to wonder that too because everybody's like skipping 4D, but I think, I think 4D from you know what i can gather and i've never really like gone out and totally researched it but 4d to me is like the astral um the astral plane like the astral plane let's say between heaven and earth um it made a lot of sense to me uh, i think the way i understood 4d was that there the time the linear was still there i don't know i can't re recall everything i'm too discombobulated but to me it's it's that space that was basically behind the scenes where the arconic energy was, where the distortion was rooted. Uh, I know myself and a lot of people when they woke up and some still do the work, but uh, when they woke, and I know when I woke up eight or nine years ago, um, I had like 25 or 30 different encounters with disincarnated souls and they were in between those, that space. And, and that space had ego in it. And that space had uh, other um, non-physical incarnated uh, energies in it uh, you know like we might call dark so i think that was to me that's what the fourth you know the fourth is you know in other words that the distortion still has some level of control yeah yeah i, I understand that um because some people think that the fourth dimension is about time you know and um because mm -hmm. i do sit there you know and i sort of i contemplate these things because my, my thing is it's all very well all this stuff coming in but what practical use is it to me, first and foremost, because I've become very selfish in my old age, mm -hmm. what good is all this information to me? And then once I've understood it and acted upon it, how can I be of use or service to other people? <clears throat> and that's where I'm up to. And do you know what I've come to, Todd, is mm. just become aware of your breathing, right? End of story, mate. You know, become aware yeah. of your breathing, sit quietly, Wait for some inspiration or intuition to emerge, not from the ego, but just allow it to pop up like a sort of globule or a bubble mm. of consciousness to give you a clue to say, turn left here, Joe. And that's more or less how I live my life now. I don't try and work anything out anymore. It's sort of left me because mm. I sort of get bored with it all now. I mean, I went through mm. all that galactic phase and you know being guided by this that and the other syrians you know arians Arcturians, and all, all sorts of different things you know that seems to have gone and left me now you know and i don't know whether i pick up the collective consciousness right and i start working on that you know so there's almost like different feelings now when different consciousnesses come in 
And I've got this almost like disregard for it all now. I'm just trying to be honest. Where mm -hmm. I can't be, I can't be asked with it all. You know, I just want to have a basically simple, straightforward. This is what I feel. This is what I think. Thanks very much for your view. I don't agree with it at all, but I might do tomorrow. You know, <laughs> you know, and that's where I'm up to. And I don't fight with it because I've come to the point that to me, quantum means that you can have all sorts of different points of view from one moment to the next, and that's where mm. I seem to be up to. You know that nobody's got the full picture and everybody's got a small, tiny fragment of what this whole big thing's all about, you know? And mm. so if that means that I've stopped judging to a large degree, which I have, to be honest, and I sort of listen to other people's viewpoints, if it doesn't resonate with me, I just disregard it. I don't knock it back to say it's right or wrong. I just yeah. stick it on the back burner because it might be very relevant and prevalent this time next week. That's true. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, I think that the thing that with that is that if, you know, it's not so much, do you resonate with it? Cause I think we're all kind of getting to the point where we understand, Hey, if it doesn't resonate, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you know, I can just go about my business and, and just, you know, move away from that, but not like block it out, just move away from that energy. But I think the important part is if somebody posts something or says something or whatever in it, and it bothers you, you know, like yeah. it doesn't matter how it bothers you. Just does it bother you? Is it staying with you? Uh, if it's staying with you and you're kind of walking away from it, but it still keeps popping in, then then obviously it's just another message for us, you know. And then I think to what were you saying earlier about the the oh, I, I think uh, you know it, okay. So we have to use these labels, which are ridiculous, you know. I mean, ridiculous from the higher awareness, but. Um, you know, we, we kind of have to do that to discuss and you know, have a conversation, which I still believe is the 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 highest opportunity for uh, the highest opportunity for the highest level of downloads and transmissions and code sharing. But I think all this stuff that's come in, uh, you know, the modalities and the processes and the past life memories, future life and all that stuff, uh, be it galactic, angelic or whatever, I think was meant to wake us up. You know, I think that's what it was. I think it was meant to make us uh, uh, help us to, uh, you know, initiate the trajectory of self-awareness. And then at some point we get kicked out of the bird's nest and we're on our own. And I think that's kind of where we're at now. And I think that's why what you said, and I can kind of relate to it most of the time. And I think other people are too, is that a lot of that, uh, the, the uh, foo-foo or, you know, woo-woo stuff, a lot of the woo-woo stuff is going away because we are, we are that. Like, like in other words, we are the the uh, the walking uh, enlightenment billboards ourselves. You know, we don't. We're, we're the message givers. We're the conduits and the channels. We don't really have to take this information from these other aspects anymore, which are actually us in the first place. But mm -hmm. I think that's what you're going to start seeing. You're going to start seeing people in the flesh both by uh, the energy that they represent could be an aura could be a skill or ability could be information could be lifestyle are going to start lighting people up the way that these uh our multi-dimensional aspects have lit us up over the years i'll tell you something else that i've been noticing for a long time now is the clouds look different mm -hmm. you know i've become a great cloud watcher and my favorite colors become gray because it's almost like i can sort of get I get encloaked in this sort of grayness and out of that information emerges, you know, and I don't know about the cloud because I, I think water and the properties of water are, are misunderstood. You know, I think water carries all the information of the universe. And I think it's within water at different vibrations and different levels that different information is transmitted to different people at different levels of consciousness. And when I say different levels of consciousness, I don't mean better or worse. I just mean dimensions of consciousness yeah. that people are at, you know. So, <clears throat> so clouds have become important. And I've really, you know, the shapes that appear in clouds, right, to me are phenomenal. Have you got anything to say about clouds? Yeah, well, I, you know, uh, it's almost nine years ago now, uh, but you know, eight and a half, nine years ago, uh, one of the one of the first things I was told, you know, like I'm talking like one of the f first four or five things I was told, which I'm still trying to figure out, <laughs> it was uh, keep your eye on the clouds, you oh. know, and so in the early years, I would see like synchronistic uh, images. 
you know, like, like I remember one time uh, I had this big wolf, you know, uh, spirit guy, that, his name was White Wolf, I had this big encounter with him at this pond. And then I looked up in the clouds and two people were with me and I'm like, there's a, there's a freaking wolf <laughs> in the clouds. But as time went on, then uh, I started to notice what you're noticing and, and not just that the clouds are different than they were when I was a kid, but that they're actually changed, like, you know, over a period of months or certainly over four or five, six years. And now there's just some there's just some totally unique clouds there. And then also, I think other, um, you know, other things appear, like I saw a portal appear in some clouds. Uh, I think, you know, people see lights, you know, some of these clouds that you see pictures of had some really trippy looking spaceship looking uh, shapes, you know, very contoured. So yeah, I don't, I don't really know what that is, but I do think we should keep our eye on it. I, I feel, you know what Todd, I feel in myself, I feel cool. I feel calm, I feel collected, but I don't feel like a good person. You don't? No, nope. I don't wow. feel like a good person, but I don't feel like a bad person either, you know. And I don't know whether that's a good thing or not, you see, because if I allow my head to go in and start analyzing that, I'll start to get disturbed by it all and I'll come out of this peace of mind, you know. So people keep telling me, you know, oh, you do so much good and this, that and the other. You know, you help so many people. Something I've been reading recently from a few different people is that unless we're totally enlightened and free, we're of no service to anybody else because we're just more or less interfering. Have I misinterpreted, <laughs> have I misinterpreted that information? I've, I've, I've not seen, well, I have seen, uh, you know, stuff that looks like you know, maybe you know a big part of the frequency majority of the frequency is kind of like giving that impression i have seen stuff like that uh i don't think that you know oh you know what did socrates say uh, the only thing i know is i don't know shit uh, i think he yeah. said that <laughs> but you know uh i well look you know we've all pulled stuff in it's very powerful very powerful you know like it'd be you pulling in light language for the first time or you know jesus walks in the door or some galactic and you get this information and you think you're real smart and who wouldn't, you know, so this is all kind of like, you know, taking layers off and, and uh, fading away are the egoic things. I think, you know, another thing too to consider is a lot of people have been on this path for a few years and they've been given specific information, you know, uh, unique skills and abilities in certain genres or certain, you know, uh, arenas like yourself. And, uh, and then, yeah, I see a lot of people hitting the wall, me included, uh, Morgan at times included, where you're like going, okay, what are, what are we doing here? You know, like, uh, you know, and, and that's why I said before, like, you know, are we just all a bunch of healers going to be healing each other or when we're all about self-empowerment and healing ourselves? But I, but I think the reason why I'm saying that is because I think part of it too might be that the community that we're in has a, uh, you know, obviously a higher proportion of these types of experiences that, that we all share on these on these uh, shows and in our posts. And I think maybe uh, we're getting to a point very quickly, like very, very quickly. Uh, and this is just kind of my intuitive, instinctive, putting history together and things that people have said that are that, you know, that are credible over the years, including my wife, that we were going to be put to work soon. And that it, it maybe at that time, uh, when that time happens, if it happens, we're going to realize uh, that there is a, a, a very vast majority in the world that through some type of catas catastrophic energy is uh, going to kind of level the playing field. And they're going to be looking for people that, that are common, cool and collected, not because they're enlightened, but because they've done a whole bunch of work and they still do the work every day. And they'll be looking for services that are going to be unique to certain individuals. So maybe that's part of the pressure that we're feeling, you know, I, I do feel like something, something, you know, I know people say that, oh, something's going to happen. The universe is going to, you know, wink at us or whatever the case is. But I really feel like March is a big month. And part of what you're saying is what Morgan and I have been talking about just recently this morning. We, you know, typically we've watched uh, Game of Thrones and we watched Outlander. Occasionally we watch movies as we try to process things with more ease and grace and, and get our head out of it, like you were talking about earlier, uh, and just let it flow through. The body and uh, so we've been watching the tutors and it is absolutely uh you know almost disgusting you know i've had to get up a couple of times and go outside and take a few breaths and and but she pointed out she said look this is the this is the lineage that we're removing we're removing uh greed 
and and rape and and you know and and, and lust and and you know all that st and and you know uh, horrific you know uh, treatment of other people and unfairness and injustice and we're we're removing all of that but where are we removing it at the deepest level yeah everything we're doing is collective at the deepest level it's in awe it, to me you know just my my take on it uh, what I don't like about myself what I didn't do you know, why did I do that then? What did I do then? You know, um, I think it's, I think that's part of what's coming up. And maybe, maybe that's what you're feeling uh, when you say, you know, you don't, you don't like yourself, but you don't hate yourself. I mean, you know, I, I, I can honestly say that, that I feel a vibration of love that's been increasing regardless of all the convoluted ness that's been occurring since the, you know, the last few weeks since the first of the year. No, I didn't say I didn't like myself. I said I, said I didn't I didn't feel like a good person. Oh, you didn't feel like a good person. I, I don't yeah. feel like a bad person either. Mm. I feel like a sort of a, a null person, you know, a sort of, um, yeah. it feels like bored shitlessness. You know what I mean? I, I sometimes, mm. I know that, I know that there's so many fantastic and exciting things going on, but it's like, oh, whatever. You know, I feel like a sort <laughs> of angst, actually an unangsty teenager. You know, I've seen to, I have the, emotional calm right that teenagers don't have right but yeah. i seem to have the head of an adolescent in, in so many different ways you know which could kick me into a lot of trouble if I, if I sort of went along with it but what i'm trying to say is i feel calm but sometimes i feel bored shitless and sometimes i feel that it's all purposeless you know i'm only being mm. honest Todd, because I, I you know but what what appeals to me more than anything else is it's almost like the antithesis of trying to go for some sort of divinity. And I really, like you've said for ages, you know, the human is the hero. Mm -hmm. I feel that the more that we get out of the way and we allow this feeling, this spirituality, this light body, this Merkaba, uh, we allow, we, we remove, remove ourselves from the equation and allow this to start coming through us. I mm -hmm. think that's what this is all about is that we don't have to do anything as such because we're being done to by a force. And I used to think it wasn't a force, but it really is becoming more and more powerful. You know, I, I don't know whether that's made some sort of sense, but the more I get out of the way and stop trying to work things out, the more yeah. understanding I get. It's when my head gets involved to try and work it out, I get the I can't see the effing point of this. What's it all about? You know, and, and I, I go off into like realms of self-pity and frustration and resentment, you know. And then my head comes in to say, oh, you're still judging. So you must be on a very low rung of the ladder. Yeah. You know, you said earlier about, you know, you change it. You, you start off uh, each day with the first sheet. Uh, I think I think we don't really have a choice in that matter anymore. I think, um, you know, to your point. Uh, OK, well, we can look at uh, our community. Uh, we can look at our individual path. We can also look at the global thing. So, for instance, uh, you know, one of the things that you're saying, you know, we, we've got a lot of people, me included, you included, everybody's got to admit it, that, you know, to some degree or another, we have gotten some information directly downloaded, you know, mainline from infinite intelligence, and we understand that we're supposed to share that. Uh, you know, again, we're still working out, <clears throat> you know, the threads of the ego. And uh, the dissolution of, of the old uh, egoic neural pathways, and and we're we're having to deal with that. So it's it, like you said earlier, it's just it has different layers. Uh, but what I guess what I'm saying is, is that you know the the frequency of you know and they're not really saying this necessarily. We're all doing the best we can, but you need to do this and you need to do that, and you'll be saved. And and whatever you said earlier about being enlightened, and you know, or you won't be of service, and all these all these absolutes being thrown down, what's the difference between that and what's happening in the external? Uh, oh, here's a coronavirus, you better take a vaccine, or oh, QAnon is gonna save the world. Now, I'm not knocking anything or anyone, I'm, I'm trying to be as neutral as possible in, in every moment of my life, but what I'm trying to say is we can look at uh, a, a, a series like the Tudors, and we can see the divine intervention, uh, you know, Elizabeth re uh, reigns for 44 years. And if you look at the historical impact she had, it was it was ginormous across the entire world, probably underrated compared to, to the last, some of the heroes, say, of the last two or three hundred years. But what I'm trying to say is, is that uh, it, it on one hand, it is it is uh, what you're saying. It is like, you know, mind your own business. 
to thine own self be true. Keep your nose out of everybody's business and just focus on yourself. Take in that information as information, like you said, and don't judge it. Uh, but at the same time, I do think we have a purpose here. I don't know if some souls came from somewhere else and have done this many, many times. There's been a lot of people that have written some stuff that, that correlates like that. And many, many people. Uh, and then there's some that are more that are, say, newer. Maybe they were born on the earth. I don't know. Uh, that are going to need some help because otherwise, you know, I don't, I don't know. I just think that there's some purpose to the information we're given. And I guess ultimately it's meant for us to expand. And I think one way we expand is by, util by taking action, utilizing, you know, like you said earlier, uh, what makes you happy, what you align with. And, and, and certainly everybody wants to be of service. And, and so whatever it is your gift is like yours uh, to work in the, in the areas that you work in is, is expansion because you're actually, you know, you're actually investing in yourself. No, I agree, mate. So I think it's I've 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 sort of let go of that up down thing now. You know the ladder, and I see more and more is it's about not only is my belly expanding, right, but I think my consciousness is expanding as well. You know, and um, I think what seems to happen is the deeper I drop into this thing and surrender, the more my consciousness expands, right, and the more information seems to come in from those different fields. You know, and that's what quantum means to me is. It means that there are different sort of um, levels of consciousness. So we have to use these words, you know, different sorts of rings of consciousness that the deeper we go into ourselves, the further we expand, the more information comes in and therefore the more knowledge comes in. I think that wisdom comes in when you actually act upon the information received. Yeah. I also think as well that there's a different feeling that goes with a different stream of consciousness and that it becomes very important. So this is just what I've learned about me. It's, it becomes very important to become more and more body aware. It's almost like every single skin cell has got a piece of information attached mm -hmm. to it. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's a thing in medicine uh, where they test your uh, nervous system on your periphery. And it's a very, very tiny, tiny plastic monofilament. And what they do is they take the tiniest monofilament like a hair and they just place it on your skin to see if your nervous system's working. And you can feel that, Todd. You know, if you're in good, normal, healthy condition, people can feel that. And that's one single impact or impulse sending information back to us. And I think what's happening, and I see this a lot, is people are becoming more and more sensitive because their consciousness is expanding. But for a while, they become emotionally sensitive. And unless they know how to breathe properly and let go of this stuff, then they become very frustrated, they become angry, they become ill, you know. So, so to me, I think I am a teacher of this thing. And when I say teacher, I only mean this is what I've been through. This is where I am now. Here are some of the techniques that I've learned that may, you know, that have helped me, right? Why don't you try them and see if they help you? And sometimes they do help people and sometimes they don't, you know. And I think that's all I've got to do is I can only try and be as honest as possible about sharing my personal lived experiences, my my um, my successes, so called, and failures, so called, and try and be honest about it, you know, without over elaboration. I find that difficult, you know, because I do like to sort of, as I said before, wax lyrical and put a bit of poetic license in there as well, you know, because <laughs> that's part of me fun, as you know, is to have a laugh and a joke, if possible, that's about right. really really serious subjects. Yeah, but that's a big part of your frequency of your you know of your collective frequencies your vibration is is the humor and i think you know even though it's not instructive you know like like textbook textbookish you know you know it's it's still a part of your frequency and 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 this is what we're dealing with we're dealing with frequencies we're dealing with light code waves i don't know all the you know mechanics or the scientifics of it but i do know that you know like with, with what I, the work i do and have done that you know it's it's the whole frequency you know i use the example like back in the early days making videos you know hung over with no shirt on and, and just going off uh but the, people people watched it it wasn't so much the message it was you know it was probably more just the heart intention and i think that's that's uh what a lot of people are, are bringing everything down to right now is like you know when in doubt run it through the heart so uh, but I agree, too, that, you know, there's a synthesis occurring, there's no doubt, you know, we're not just being reminded by our multidimensional aspects of who we are and being put on that trajectory. We're also, uh, it, it's also creating uh, an availability of, 
you know, to, uh, up to the recent past at, at a minimum, uh, new code, old code, sacred code, whatever you want to, what do you want, whatever you want to call it, uh, old sacred techniques and processes, modalities and what, um, but uh, to your point and to the point of the hashtag, the human is the hero, uh, we have to, we have to embody this. Uh, and I don't like the word have to or need to, yeah. uh, we, we will embody this. You know, we will embody this regardless of how conscious or unconscious we are, regardless of how cooperative we are, uh, you know, how much we recognize uh, what the universal energies are doing. This will happen. And I think what it does, it allows for the individual, uh, the individual aspect of God, goddess, Todd or Joe, whatever the whoever it is, it allows them an opportunity to take that that uh, I'm going to say predetermined cyclical uh, expansion it allows them to take that opportunity uh, into themselves and actually expanded more which has a micro which is a microcosm but has a macro effect you know so it, it's just real time present time and it, uh, everything that you're saying is very relevant and i think is 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 much better than getting step-by-step -step instruction on how to levitate walk on water or astral project to other universes. I think it's actually, hey, I don't really know. This is how I feel. Uh, tomorrow I might wake up saying things that are totally opposite. I might be all over the board at times, uh, but not so much the characteristics of doing that, but being able to say I'm all over the board all the time, you know, or, or I feel like crap this morning or my stomach hurts or I'm having these memories of, you know, when I was younger and I didn't really care for some of the stuff I did and or I didn't take advantage of the opportunities I had or whatever whatever the case is just the human truth you know well no I agree mate and I think as you say we're having a conscious conversation now where we're not trying to sort of be clever about anything or stuff like that but what's been happening to me recently and my my dreams are wild they are just totally and utterly wild and so colorful that you know when you wake up and you're sort of in that like paralysis state I've tried to put myself back into the wild dream rather than coming back to this reality, you know. So, I mean, I, I think that there's a lot of processing going on in my dream state, but I also feel a lot of pain as well and physical discomfort, you know. And sometimes I wake up and I think I've got like fibromyalgia or CME or whatever you know want to call it. And other mornings I wake up with no pain whatsoever, you know. So um, I, I'm trying to learn more and more about you know, how can, <laughs> how can I have less pain and suffering? I know Morgan's written about this, you know, and I think that we can transcend pain and suffering, I think, by going deeper. This is just my feeling on it again, mm. because the deeper you go, I think that you get beyond memory then. And I think pain and suffering is intricately linked to the past. And the past is basically just in our memory banks. And I think once yeah. you transcend those or, or detach from them, I think all pain uh, goes. And I've had this feeling, I know that you have as well, where it's almost like you're floating, but there's just a great big ooze of love, you know, coming out, you know. Yeah. And I have this quite often, but I also have the pain and the suffering and the misery as well, you know. In fact, the other day, Todd, I felt that low that I just wanted to die again. And it's a feeling that I used to have every single day. But then mm. about an hour later, I felt that high that I just wanted to die again, you know, and that's where I was, you know, and, and, and the high one reminded me of intimate embraces with people where, you know, you just, and I shared this the other day, I just want to die in your arms tonight. You know, I felt so um, encased in this loving feeling and I was by myself at the time, you know, mm. and I honestly believe that that is the true, if you're like, here as gamos is when you can be by yourself when your divine connections or your divine masculine and feminine are actually in an intimate embrace within your consciousness mm. and then all the gates of heaven are open to you, you know? Mm. So I think that that's, that's where we can go with that one. And I think mindful breathing, in my opinion, is probably a, a helpful way forward, you know, to, to take some time away, make some sacred space, put on some music that resonates with your heartstrings and just go into this coherent breathing. And you know, I teach this and I use sort of neuroscientific equipment just to show people that there is some sort of evidence base behind this, that in real time, they can change the way their breathing works, which change the way their heart works, which change the way their head works, 
which change the way their life is, you know. And that's what I'm trying to do is get back into the body, hack the physiology to change the psychology and help people to choose in a more quality way. Man, that was, that was a pretty cool. good rap there, bro. Yeah, I was on one then. It should have been put that to music. <laughs> Psychology. <laughs> no, that, yeah, I, you know, um, I, you know, absolutely. I, I, uh, well, okay. So the pain and suffering thing. I mean, if we all look back to now, everybody's timeline is not the same uh, linear, but a lot of the stuff be, began to occur on or about 2012. Um, so many people had a succession of traumas or maybe one major trauma or whatever the case is, doesn't really matter. Uh, and, and that was very painful. We're not in the same pain atmosphere. We have definitely, definitely many of us, most of us that I'm, I'm saying probably everyone that's out here listening or will listen has elevated beyond pain. Now, one of the uh, proofs I would give to that is that many people uh, over the last year or so have lost uh, once and for all, uh, lost old paradigms, old uh, relationships, you know, uh, family, friends, uh, yeah. uh, intimate relationships, uh, marriages. Uh, if we can look at those uh, points of separate, what appearing or as, that are appearing as points of separation to the human aspect, I don't think that we're feeling uh, the pain that we would have felt five years ago in regard to these things. So we, we've definitely elevated uh, is pain and suffering going to go away? I think pain and suffering is kind of a barometer for us. It's kind of like a compass, you know, or, or at least a red flag indicator or something. Uh, can we, um, you, you know, can, I'm a big believer that, you know, the, the, what we call inner work, uh, you know, I call it, you know, come to Jesus, you know, meeting brutal honesty of the soul. It's no, it doesn't matter what you talk to about uh, with other people or what you try to justify or the, whatever with other people. It's just you in the universe is much more effective than, you know, and I'm not making fun of anything or anyone. I just have to crack a joke. But I mean, you know, I think it's much more effective than uh, just, you know, sitting down and blowing cosmic smoke rings and, you know, uh, and, and just, you know, not addressing the human, uh, the human lineage, your own personal uh, human lineage, soul lineage involved with the human and, and the collective human journey. I think we we serve ourselves by listening, uh, being aware of what's coming through because it will it will come through. It'll come back around and around int until we we see it. So we are being assisted, but I think it serves us to take a look at things and uh, it, so we can get to the point where we're not beating ourselves up anymore in regard to this, this, and this, because they were unconscious, because we were not aware at the time, then you get to a higher point. And then at one point, uh, hopefully we get to that point where, you know what, this is ridiculous. Nobody's at fault here, but not just saying it, uh, but actually feeling it. That's the most important thing. And you can't just make yourself feel it. We, we, we are experiential beings and that's how we learn. So that might be an exercise, me sitting down, making a list that, you know, Morgan gives me that says, you know, put all the, the attributes of, of uh, you know, this particular polarity and this polarity uh, in yourself and go through them. It might be something like that. It might be I run into, uh, you know, a situation or a person I haven't seen in a while that brings back a situation that had run cyclical in my life. And then I go, oh, OK, I'll, I, well, this happened over and over again. And, you know, uh, I don't know that we have to know exactly all the details, but at least if we can identify it. I think we've actually moved into, you're talking about quantum. I actually think we've moved into, uh, I guess, uh, across some thresholds to a point where there's at least some degree of just becoming aware of something is a big, big deal. You know, I mean, that's, it's not going to maybe not do it all for you, but, you know, Morgan told me a long time ago, uh, awareness is the first step of transformation. And it's very true. Uh, but a lot of times in the last few months, I'll become aware of something and, almost clears you know you know unless it's like a deep deep thing but like just things little things i would become aware of and i'll be like oh i'll catch myself you know just because i became aware of it you know versus being told something no, no i agree mate and I, and I think what happens to me is sometimes i see things and the discomfort associated with it just dissolves so that's working in consciousness but sometimes i'll see something I'll become aware of it. I'll say to me, deepest self, right, thank you for showing me that. But then I get the message back. 
know what we're showing you because you've got to take an action now. You have to take a physical action now mm -hmm. to cancel this out. So I think some things can be, re you can be relieved with, uh, from some things. This is just my way of explaining it by seeing it and it dissolves. But on some things as well, you've got to actually take a physical action. That would be to me the pathway of karma, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's all sorts of different um, aspects of consciousness going on. I also, you know, I've talked to you about this before is what I think about from a quantum point of view. I got this many, many years ago is that there are 12 dimensions, Joe, right? So you know how you just get this thought that pops in. There are 12 dimensions, Joe, to what it is to be fully human, right? Mm -hmm. And the world is now going through a transition phase where people are becoming more and more aware of their multiple intelligences, you know. Mm. And so I, I realize this now that we've all got the ability that if we drop into our heart and soul, we can actually start to be guided towards practicing with these different aspects of individual consciousness and therefore potentials, you know. And I think I was diagnosed, Todd, uh, in, when I was ill as a schizophrenic. And I'm, I'm seeing now that I wasn't really, I was just somebody who's got multiple potentials. I'm talking about potentials, not a bit, not skills or brilliant at it, but multiple potentials. But I was in the wrong environment and I was afraid all the time and fear blocked, right, mm -hmm. all these potentials from coming out. But when I took drink and drugs, Todd, what happened is they all came online at the same time. And it was mm. such a feeling of freedom and, and empowerment that obviously if I drank a half a bottle of whiskey to get the effect, then my head ego wise then said, just have a bottle now and see if you can get a bigger feeling, you know, and that's mm. what addicted me to it. You know, I didn't do much on the drug side of things, but you know, my feeling now is for me, and I'm only talking about me is, that I think if I take something external now to get my consciousness to change, that's almost like a con job now. It's inauthentic. I'm only talking about me. It's inauthentic. Mm -hmm. But just to go back to the, the old days, I would be in a room where people were, they were smoking these very strange smelling cigarettes that smelled like roses and herbs burning, you know. And some, <laughs> some of them must have gone up my nose, Todd, you know. And I remember when the, this sort of smoke went up my nose, I can remember that the music started to go slower, but it seemed to resonate more. So the music became much more beatish and much more profound and have a powerful impact on me. Not only did that happen, but also the lights and the bright blue became bluier. You know, mm -hmm. the colors became more defined and refined and it was marvelous. And also what happened is I started to get a feeling that I loved everybody. And at the mm -hmm. same started to get a very hungry feeling as well. So I was starving. <laughs> right. I was loving people. Right. I was completely free Todd because this smoky stuff had gone up my nose and had in some way changed my consciousness. And that's mm -hmm. what I got hooked on for about 15 years was to try and take external chemical agents to induce an internal consciousness effect. And I realized it nearly took me to my death. And I've, I've said to you before is, what happened to me is it led me to the gates of insanity and near death. And at the gates of insanity, something said to me in a very strong and powerful thought form, it said to me, son, if you can't take a joke, you shouldn't have signed up for this, you know. And I was yeah. trying to kill myself and therefore full of victim and full of self-pity. Mm -hmm. And this sort of divine intelligence was taking the piss out of me, you know. And I sort of almost got the, the feeling of turn around now, son, and we will show you one step at a time, one breath at a time, one moment at a time, how to extract yourself from this and how to show others to do it. And I really, really feel that that's why it's so important to us to be honest about what happened to us, to mm. share what it's like now, and to maybe share our hopes for the future. And I think that's my job, mate, because it's coming up now to 28 years since I totally handed over the management of my life, even the everyday affairs, to this divine intelligence or to this um, higher intelligence or deeper intelligence within me. And I sort of, him and I, or her and I, or whatever it is, and I, the we, we you. work together. Yeah, yeah. The we, it, and you, and everything else, you know, we work together.
to almost like navigate what the next move is. I'm, I'm definitely on one now, so I can feel myself waking up. But all I'm trying to say is, my feeling is that there is a danger in using external agents, right, to reach different levels of consciousness because it's sort of a, it, it, it's a blind alley. And that, I'm just talking about my experience. Have you got mm. any comments to make on that at all? No, yeah, uh, yeah. I think you bring up some good points. I think, I think, first of all, again, you know, regardless, we really have to listen to what we say. Um, you know, you, me, everybody. Uh, even when we don't think we're talking about ourselves, we are. Uh, some people can see it in us. Uh, some sometimes we can see it in ourselves. I think we're being supported to uh, have. I think we have more clarity, uh, moment by moment, day by day. Uh, and if we want to. Uh, have greater clarity in any aspect of our journey, then we can just basically program ourselves to do that or ask or pray. You know, I think it's kind of silly now because we're really talking to ourselves. Uh, but I think so the word programming or reprogramming uh, to borrow one of Morgan's terms. Uh, I think uh, the other thing is the, you know, one of the things that she's been talking about the last few days uh, and I've been picking up on, you know, and, and I've noticed too, for a lot of people that I've been talking to, the telepathy is really starting to, to bleed together, uh, between two or more people and start to become functional. And what I've noticed over the last, uh, you know, week or, or so, uh, since she got back from Kansas city is that, you know, sometimes when we put our hands together at night, we don't say anything. Uh, if we do say anything, 90% of the time it's her, you know, the feminine's a transmitter. And, uh, but what I've noticed when we're not talking or nothing said, and then we wake up the next day and we kind of have a review, I realize that I'm getting the same thing she's getting, uh, in, uh, even though we're not talking about it, uh, or even though it's not, you know, I might've seen it in images or some other way or a feeling, but as we talk about it, I realize now the reason I bring that up is because, you know, uh, one of the things that has been, you know, on the topic table with us the last few days she's right now doing some mandalas in regard to processing and anchoring it has to do with the shadow and that that you know this really went down for me in the last couple of days uh you know my history was a lot like yours uh and uh you know i did a lot of really crazy crazy wild things i mean very very crazy um you know death wishes you know i mean it it was uh yeah, you know, it was what it was. But my point is love in the shadow. Yeah. You know, although this is a school or a university uh, or it's an, it's not even real, you know, coming from the higher perspective, we're here. The human's a hero. Uh, every part of our journey beyond cliche phrases and words is us. I am that crazy MF that did the things I did when I was a kid, that did the things I did when I was 50 years old and I was waking up, I was still running and gunning big time and, and, and put myself in, in grave danger. Um, you know, from the human perspective, but you know, the whole point is, is the stories, the stories traumatized us. The, then we utilize the stories to uh, release the traumas or remove the shrouds of the soul. Uh, and now the stories, you know, I wrote one time on the streets, you know, pain is my teacher. Suffering is my best friend. I, I didn't mean I want them to hang around forever. I just meant I'm, and, and that kind of uh, describes where I think we're, we're coming into now, which is we can look at these stories. These are our greatest, this is our greatest achievements, man. You know, I mean, our greatest achievements, I mean, these, you know, I hear women, uh, you know, had a, a terminal illness and, and they, they heal themselves. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, they, there's just so many, so many what well, seemingly setbacks that they turned into comebacks. This is transmutation. This is transformation. So I think it's important if we are still locked into the story, uh, are we looking at the story and, and beyond bullshit, you know, beyond cliche, are we really looking at the story? That's us. That, that, that took over your life 28 years ago. That's you. Yeah. That, that was in control. Uh, you know, the prior to that 28 years was you, this is all me. Everything I've done was me. You know, I don't know if I'll ever, uh, you know, I know you, you know, you know, that I've, um, uh, 
you know, I drink a little bit, right? And I know your history and I have a lot of friends like that. I've, uh, you know, coming from a different perspective, but I don't know that I'll ever do that again. Um, and it's not like, you know, I had to go through a 12 step or anything like that. Not that anything's wrong with it because I have gone through a 12 step uh, years ago uh, when I was on probation. But what I'm trying to say is, is that everything's changing. Uh, I, can, I, I, I can, I, I'm going to take everything with me. And what I mean by that is I'm going to take every part of my experience with me. My shadow is my greatest teacher. My shadow is me. I saw a Rumi quote that said, wherever you go, your shadow will go. And sometimes it'll be in front of you. You know, I mean, it was one of those, you know, uh, uh, chiasmic type of uh, ge geometrically shaped uh, little phrases that he does. But if you look behind it, I mean, this is it. The shadow is the trip. The shadow is the gift and the glory. And, 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 it, and it's like, if I can look back now, and I just recently got started, I'm not even saying I'm there. I'm just saying I'm getting there in these discussions with Morgan and I'm in the, and what's coming in. I'm realizing, holy crap, what a, what a ride, man. Yeah. I mean, what a ride, you know, what a ride jumping off that cliff. What a ride, you know, taking my truck and, and, you know, trying to jump a, a little mini little uh, ravine, you know, and, and didn't work out, you know, what are the fights, the, 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 the dancing at 50 years old, the, 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 uh, the, the crazy from a human perspective, the crazy stuff. I mean, I, I was by human standards when I woke up, absolutely certifiable. Yeah. I was making decisions that were actually, I mean, absolutely crazy, but this, I love, I, I'm, I'm beginning to love this, you know, and then, in, in, and then going back to the word quantum, one of the things that quantum means to me is I can do it now. I don't have to go through a six step, 16 step, six week process. I don't have to go do 50 Hail Marys, you know, for seven straight days. You know, I don't have to go download anything. I can instantaneously level up now. And, and I think a, a, a big part of that for me that's occurring now is loving that shadow, you know, actually loving that shadow, loving my journey, you know, and, and, uh, you know, I think it's, I think it's, uh, going to be a big part of what's happening because all of this stuff has to be, or, or will be embodied. And, and, and it's not so much what we, um, you know, we want to run to, Oh my God, I talked to mother Mary and I'm not, not making fun of anyone. I'm, Oh my God. I had this collect, uh, connection with the galactic uh, star family, you know, on Arturius or whatever. We all, we want that. We know we want to pull on that and just hang out there, but it's the human that is the God that, you know, they're going to have other, we're going to have other incarnations on other universes and other planets. And who do you think is going to be the divine essences? We are. And they're going to go, Oh, St. Uh, Dr. St. Joe, you know, he, he was an alcoholic and they're going to show footage, you know, in the, <laughs> the Akashic, uh, you know, TV channels of, of you getting your ass beat by the local teenagers when you're trying yeah. to walk home half blitzed. And, yeah. and, and he rose out of that and he came out of that. This woman that was on yesterday, uh, a lot like Morgan's story, you know, was raped for, yeah. for, for 10 years. She came out. She overcame that. You know, you know that we we are no different than what we look at with Archangel Michael or uh, you know Commander Ashtar or whoever. We are them. We are us. We are them, and we are actually we're already in it. You know, we're in it. We're 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 creating a new template, an expanded template, and it's a bad badass template. You know, it's and it's still to be determined, but the shadow. You know, I mean, I fought the shadow when I first met Morgan because I didn't have any. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with you. And now today, today, it's, it's, a, you know, it's, 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 it, everything seems to be happening synchronistically, sequentially, in order. I'm having a discussion with you. This stuff's just coming out as it comes in because yeah. of the, all the different things involved. Um, but, you know, I wake up every day. You know, yeah, we're, she's had a headache for like six of the last nine days, energy headaches. And other women, by the way, have two and other physical ailments. Uh, I've been up and down a little bit. 
and I told her a while ago, I said, <clears throat> do you understand like how much I love you? And she'll say, you mean how much you love yourself? And I'll be, and I'll be like, uh, no, I love you. but, but it's true. That's true. You know, I used to say to her, you know, I do a session two, three days, two, three days later, I'd come out of it and I go, you look different. You look, you look better. And, she, and she'd just laugh at me or, oh my God, the sky looks different. It's me. And, and I think the shadow part of it <clears throat> is the key. You know, it's the key. How are you, how can you, how can you utilize your history that was predominantly um, run by shadow? How can you utilize that as an alchemic um, component? How, and now, now, do you do it by doing list and integrating polarities, you know, as she teaches? Uh, uh, do you do it by, you know, uh, whatever, you know, I mean, how can you take that information, you know, from your experience and transform that into, you know, the op, the op, the opposite polarity of how deep in degrees you went in your own experience, how deep you went, you know, I mean, how can you do that? And then somebody mentioned the drug thing. Um, Cause I, and, and then I'm done. Uh, so I don't know. Everybody's on their own. You know, I, if I, if I'm, li I listen to you, uh, I understand your journey. I have a lot of friends that have been in the same. And look, I was I was strung out on drugs, okay, uh, ten years ago, uh, eight, nine, ten years ago, and uh, I did a lot of crazy stuff on it. Just in, in the same thing. What's the difference? Alcohol, drugs. I mean, you know, um, you know, that everyone's on their own. If you know, you're very adamant about it. And, and, and other people add them out about uh, different things. Um, I think that says more about their own, their own uh, uh, path and, 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 and the direction they're heading in terms of, of, of uh, discovery, uh, discover, uncover, recover, which whatever it is, you know, uh, then it is, and it's good information too, you know, as the individual goes, so goes the collective. And like you said, some, sometimes you work with people and, it, and it, they do great. Sometimes it doesn't resonate, whatever, you know, I mean, um, I don't know. We're, I think we're all doing the best we can. I think we've done a hell of a job too, to be honest with you. Oh, Todd, I agree. And on the drug thing, I'm not suggesting that, you know, people have to make their own choices. I'm only talking about my experience yeah. and where I've come to, you know, I'm not suggesting that what other people do is right or wrong. That's got nothing to do with me. You know, we all have to feel our way through different experiences. But I know that when I took these things, it changed my consciousness. Now, whether or not that gave me an inkling, because it was a beautiful experience. Todd, I used to snort test tube fulls of chloroform. I was working in a medical laboratory and I used to snort chloroform on a daily basis. Now that took me higher than anything else on this planet, you know. And so I've experienced those things. And all I'm trying that, to say doesn't is, that knock you out? Doesn't no, it knock no, you because out? I got to a point where you can feel oh. it it's like it's like people who sniff uh, bags of glue. Mm, it where you build point, up. Yeah. 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 And it, it comes up and you feel it goes like this. And just before, just before liftoff, right? That's yeah. when you're going to jump out your body and yeah. faint, right? Yeah. Just before that, you can stop just before that. Yeah. And you can sort of experience all this like psychedelia. And I was there every single day in a responsible job doing this. And the yeah. people around me, they covered for me because they loved me. But they yeah. didn't do me any favors by covering for me, Todd. Mm -mm. Because had I had it come to the fore earlier, then perhaps I I don't know, mate, and I don't even try and work it out. But I've been there. I've done these things. Do I do it now? No, I don't. Mm. Will I do it in the future? I've got no idea. But mm. all I try and do is clean the sheet, live as cleanly and detoxedly as possible. Yeah. And yeah. I'm only I'm only sharing what I do. Am I saying that everybody else should do that? Not in the slightest, mate. Yeah. Not in the slightest. No, I know you're not. You're, yeah. you, you, I know you're not. You're, you're, yeah, I know you. I, I know where you're coming from. And, and, and I don't know either. You know, like, I mean, I woke up um, nine years ago. And at the time, I, I was using, uh, you know, I was partying all the time. Yeah. That's how I woke up. 
you know, kind of, kind of, it kind of went hand in hand, you know, by day I was doing this and by night I was doing that. And then at two, three in the morning, I'd have these experiences. I don't know where it started, where it stopped. But my point is I did, I was for a time strung out, uh, on a particular drug and, um, uh, so by virtue of that, I experienced, uh, I chose to experience some very, very dark, dark things. Okay. That really fucked me up for a yeah. long time, even, even up to two, three years ago, Yeah, you know, uh, even up to maybe a year ago, I actually, cause I did a big session with Morgan about a year ago. Um, but at the same time, I know it had a hand in, in opening my pineal. I know something happened there with the, the, some that or some of the other ones in combination, you know, um, but, but okay. So regardless of, of any of that, regardless of, of somebody chooses a path of ayahuasca or somebody chooses a path of 12 step or somebody chooses, uh, you know, a law of one or whatever the case is. Uh, I, I think, and, and we've already seen evidence of this, I think what's what's happening now is our training wheels have come off and uh we can we can ride the bike we might we might fall now and then but we can get back up and, and, and get on the bike uh and i think the the energy or the collective uh the level of awareness in the collective is at a point where at a minimum the availability of being able to ride the bike by yourself is there being a, able to be self-sustaining you know the free energy that we are is there and I believe we'll, we're obviously we're all going to get there, you know, uh, and I and I think that there's less of an impact on anything that we give our power away to. In other words, we're being supported to be self-empowered and the we're going to kind of be going against the grain if we consciously or unconsciously are giving our power away. You know, it's going to be put in our face or or, or the, 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 you know, the the hand of providence is going to move you know something in our way or out of our way and uh what yeah morgan's nope. never seen me do any oh. drugs and i have i haven't i haven't done any i should say that i, I want to be very clear about that um i haven't done anything uh for four years you know yeah. like that um i just haven't done it no i don't know why i mean it just popped up mate i mean you know this this is the way it seems to work you know and mm -hmm. I know that that's formed part of my experience and I will not leave anything out of what's actually happened to me because I think that's the whole point that if I can share this with somebody else, it's all very well knowing in your own self, right? And knowing what I've gone through and what I've done. But then to me, the great step of humility is when you share it direct face to face with another human being. I mm -hmm. think that that's the point that I had to come to to get courageous enough to say, I really, really mean that I want to take this seriously, you know, and that's where I'm up to now, Todd. I, I say to the universe, okay, bring it on, whatever you've got for me, but do yeah. us a favor, try and be as gentle as you can, will you? You know, because yeah. I'm still, I'm still willing to take the steps to go forward in the direction that you're guiding me. And can you give us a clue where I'm going? No, Joe, you don't need to know. We've got this covered. Thanks very much. Right. And Todd, looking back over this 28 years is the change round in my life has been nothing but phenomenal, miraculous and everything else. You know, it really has. Have there been deep, dark times? Of course there have. Have there been high times? Of course there have. I'm sure that will go on for infinity. You know, but that's where I'm up to. We share similar stories. And can I just yes. tell you about the darkest experience I ever had is yes. when I really, really, I think I had two bottles of Perno, which is like a licorice type aniseed drink, you know, and I was completely and utterly more drunk than I've ever been. And what happened was uh, something jumped out of me that was like the devil, right? And I came face to face with this thing, this entity, right? And then in small blocks, it started to fold itself up and just went and just disappeared. Anyway, when I came round, I was back in the psychiatric department, right, screaming and shouting, and I had to be sectioned and all that sort of business, you know. So yeah. I've experienced the deepest, darkest, most horrible things 
but I've also experienced the most beautiful, the most loving and all that, you know. And that seems to be the mood state or the feeling that I have more than anything else now. You know, I think- and I, I do believe, like I've said to you before, that the light, the, the brightest light is to be found in the deepest belly of the beast, you know. Yeah. I know it's in the yeah. Todd, I know it is. Why? Well, that's what I, because I've yeah. gone through it, mate. Yeah. And you know what? Every single person on the face of the earth has. Yeah. Fact. Uh, every one of us, you know, I used to, I, I wrote this poem in it and I got I almost got like, you know, I almost got like, you know, beat up <laughs> years ago. And it was called Faith is a Fallen Angel. And in the in the and in the pro in the poem, uh I tell I say we're all fallen angels. Yeah. You know, people get so literal and like, oh, we're not fallen angels. You were Satan and all that. No, uh, what I meant was, is we we chose to come from a place that we didn't have to come here. Anyone and everyone, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. It doesn't matter what religion you are. You can understand that this is this is a challenging set, an incarnation or challenging set of incarnations, a challenging realm. But in the paradoxical teaching of the universe. In the, in the paradoxical opportunistic template of the universe, uh, it also has another side to it. And I'm with you, what you just said a minute ago. I'm ready to get serious about this. Being serious doesn't mean, you know, being stodgy and stiff. And, and No, being serious means, hey, you know what? I am a, I am a divine human being. I, and everyone has their own take. I'm a, I have galactic blood. I've got, I have it all, you know, and that's just my own truth to myself. I'm in this incredible journey with this incredible, beautiful woman who I, who I know I've been, we've done this many times together, you know, but that's my truth. I don't, it doesn't matter about anybody else, but I'm ready to get serious with it. All this stuff happens with, with us, with the universe, mano y mano, one-on-one. Doesn't matter what I tell you. Doesn't matter what you tell me about me. Doesn't matter what validation I get from other people. This is what's so dangerous so dangerous uh and self-defeating and illusionary with uh with social media you know that's why i don't purposely i know because i can't trust myself because i've been down that road that's why i don't engage a lot i don't make comments i don't answer a lot of messages i don't do that because i'm i'm still learning and, and I, and when I first started Sology, I mean, I was on every post. I answered every single comment. Hey, I love you, man. I love you, man. I love you, man. I love you, man. And then one day I met a woman and uh, I said, I love you. And she said, that doesn't mean anything. I said, what are you talking about? She goes, you tell everybody you love them. <laughs> Ooh, that took me like two or three years to figure that one out. But what I'm getting at is, is, you know, God, everything has both the polarities here which is which is incredible so on one end it's fake book on the other end you can be you you can actually be you and it doesn't matter one flying f-bomb what anyone says or how much credit they give or if they recognize you or not you could actually be yourself it's like a, it's like a uh, a simulation you know, well if i can start actually doing this and being me and being raw and real that's going to carry over into your, you know, into your normal, you know, uh, interaction, you know, with people you run into and off, you know, that are not virtual, you know, so, you know, I, you know, I think it's, uh, it, it's uh, it, very apparent to me that we, we have got to, not got to, that we will embody all of, we already do, we already do. All that stuff up there is just stuff inside of us that's being woken up. If I talk to you, you might open up, you might uh, help me recollect or, and open up a certain code in my, in my, in my body, you know, um, and, and, but this is it. The, the, the human is the last frontier of this journey. And, and so here we are, you know, here we are, um, you know, and, and yeah, you know, it's gotten pretty simple because it's like, okay, all I got to do is look in the mirror every day. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter what I do. And it makes it difficult for, for people, uh, I think, that, that do put themselves out there. Not that that's a good thing and not that it's a bad thing. Some people just do what they do because that's what they're called to do. Respect that. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, so it's, I remember Morgan told me a long time ago, again, here's another Morganism. Uh, and this is when she came down the first time. This is in 2017, right? And I was like, you know, 
I was not even anything. I mean, I was just like I am, you know, I, I just can't even tell you. But this this statement will, will, will explain it. She said, you're one person on camera. You're another person when you talk to me and you're another person with everybody else. When that all becomes one voice, that'll be something interesting. That she said something like that to me. And it and it stuck with me. And I thought, wow, you know, and I remember being on the street and and yeah, I don't know if we call this hearing or realizing, but you know what I mean. And and hearing that when you can when you speak to each and every single person on the face of the earth, be it a, a you know, a daughter or a father or a friend or a business uh then you're there when you can actually be the same person with every single person and when you throw the fact that you know i i happen to you know sit in a chair on a microphone on camera that throws another element into it it's actually it's actually a gift you know it's a gift and uh and i think i've i've made a lot of progress like as everybody has i really do i believe everybody's made a tremendous amount of progress i don't think we give ourselves enough credit i really don't I really don't think we've given ourselves enough credit. And I think that, yeah, we, we had some uh, archaic, I don't say archaic, but let's say um, tedious, tedious methods of, I don't say tedious, tedious. Uh, the less fun part of the ascension is the shadow, is integrating and learning to love the shadow and, 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 and you know, all that. That's why we don't want to do it. And yeah. here's the thing. Here's the kicker. All that stuff out there, you know, I can channel, I can medium, I can psychic, I can do this, I can do that, you know. Uh, that ain't gonna, that only, that only meant to serve us to tell us who we were and, and what our potential is and, 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 and that kind of thing. The real, the real magic comes from the tedious, the less woo-woo stuff, you know. It comes from you remember that time when you were in sixth grade and you beat a frog with a stick? Yeah, that's not like me, by the way, but I did that. I, that's not even like me. That's not even my nature, but I just happened to do that one day. Why, you know, why is it in my head? You know, uh, you know it's these things. It's, it's, it's the mother and the father and, and the, the, girl, the, 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 the ex, exes, you know, the ex-spouses or girlfriends or boyfriends, the children the aunts, the uncles, the perpetrators, uh, that this is where, this is where our, our, our most, uh, uh, you know, potential is. This is where our most potential is. You want ease and grace? Go do the dirty work. All right. Go do the dirty work. And I got news for you. Uh, I, I fought it. And once I took the, the leap, it was light years of difference. And that's when I go back to what I said earlier, my pain and suffering, you know, it's like a, a stair step, right? Yeah. So I'm like, you know, over here and I'm, I'm connected to all the angels and these galactics and the ascendeds and all this stuff's happening. I'm writing this beautiful poetry and I'm just like the shit. And then I discover sh what shadow is, you know, and I'm, I'm like over my head in it, you know, like if you'd have been standing on my shoulders, you'd still been up to your shoulders and shit. You know what I mean? That's how deep I was. And like, you can relate to that. And then when I did that, when I started to do that, the first time was in, in the first five weeks I met Morgan, I did like that, right? And so was I out of pain and suffering? No, but I wasn't at this level of pain and suffering anymore. I was at this one, right? And, and I think that's going back to what we said earlier. I think we're all there. And, and yeah, we got so much to be grateful for, so much to be thankful for. And, and first and foremost, when it comes to gratitude, it's me all of me. I am grateful for all of me. I am grateful for my shadow and all the multidimensional. I am literally starting to really, really feel this in my bones. And like you talked about the cellular, you know, transformation. It is, it's every cell of the body, man. It's every, it's everything, you know, it goes all the way in. It's infinitely inward. It's like, it's infinitely outward, but this is where we're at, man. It's like, uh, man, this is, it. this is it, you know? And, and uh, like the whole thing about the talking, you know, people, and I felt the same way. Boredom, I, I felt the same way. Morgan felt the same way. Like, you know, but I, I really feel like we're, we're, we're this close. Today's the 29th of February. Yeah. March 
I, I'd be real surprised if we don't see some real evidence this month. And I'm not talking about, you know, you know, people going to Guantanamo Bay and, and not that that won't happen and not that that's not significant and all that. I'm talking about individual people or couples or groups that are going to stand out and seem like they came from nowhere in terms of, you know, conventional society. Well, I'm going to be like, you know, kicking ass, you know. On the 19th of March, I'm 65 years of age, right? Mm. And I feel like I'm just going on 17 years of age. I really, really do feel that. You know, I'm still running. I'm still swimming. I'm doing all these things. Um, so we talk about gratitude. I am grateful, Todd, that I've met you, mate. And I do love you. I've never met you physically. But when I see you, my heart opens fully, you know. And I don't know whether we've shared lives together. I have a sense that you've been a, a, a wife in a past life, I think, you know. And, <laughs> and you're going to go there now. You're going to go there now. <laughs> but yeah, I think that you were unfaithful to me and I will pay you back one of these days, you know. But <laughs> as, for the, as for the leap, it's leap day today. I think you're right. I think humanity, we're building up such an energy now, we're absorbing it that we're getting ready to take this leap. I don't really, really know what this means, but you know, a quantum leap in physics terms is when we either discharge energy and fall back or we increase our energy and we jump up forward. And that's what seems to be happening now, that we're gonna move yeah. into a different dimension of understanding if we already haven't, but it will be more stable, it will be more um, generalized and nobody can be left out. And there's a difficult thing, I don't feel anybody can be left out of this. And it's we impossible. Can't, we we can't impossible. really rest. Absolutely. We can't it's really it. rest mm. until every single fragment of ourselves is reconnected, you know. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's and it's like, like I said earlier, it's not need to, have to, it's will. Yeah. It will happen. It's it's happening. So, you know, it, it, it's happening. We're, we're, we're riding a wave anyway. So, you know, on the individual basis, and we're two more gather, you know, what are you going to do? What you, you, you know, you're going to be in this big kahuna wave and what kind of, what kind of, what kind of ride can you get out of it? You know, we got nothing to lose. There's nothing to lose. Yeah. Well, you're going to a death. Is that going to take me out of this? Give me a break. You know? So I think this, nope. this is where we're at now. And I agree. I think, I think you look at the, the climate, I have to go because I have to, I have to do a show in 10 minutes. But if you look at the climate of the community since January 1st, there's been a, 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 a totally different type of atmosphere. Time has become less of a kind of thing. You know, space has become a less kind of a thing. People's people's energy is, is changing. Uh, there's a lot of stuff coming up and we know all that uh, and everything. But, uh, you know, it, it's like it's it's got a little boring. It's like it's like falling on deaf ears now. Like we've seen that, you know, that we've seen that before, you know, uh, you know, just a bigger stick, you know, another day. What is it? A bigger stick to turn it with. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like yeah. even my friends, you know, and I don't get on a lot and do that. I just like to post stuff on solo. It's harder and harder to find original stuff to post in the group. I try to do like yeah. 20, 30 posts a day. So something that's not just you. That's everybody. And it's not a bad thing. And we have to be careful because we can go into judgment about it. And, and, and I, and I have to work with myself every day on that. I really do. You know, I see, I get something from somebody and, you know, and I'm like, Oh, that person, you know, you know, I want to punch him in the eyes. Remember when he did that to me, yeah. like, how do I, can, how can I look at this person? You know what I mean? So there's a lot of that going on, but, I, but I think uh, it, it'd be interesting to see what happens. It'd be interesting to see what happens in 30 days. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Listen, mate, go on. I know you've got to go and sit. listen, thank you so much for coming on mm -hmm. this. Because I do Absolutely, feel that man. Einstein has been being channeled through you, and it's clear now <laughs> that I, under, I understand every single you know dimension that's possible. And so off you go, and um, hopefully yeah. speak to you soon. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, Doctor Joe. And um, my I love to enjoy. Morgan. I will. I will do that. I will absolutely do that. Take care. God bless, you, mate. Brother. Thanks very much. Thank you everybody for listening in. A great conversation. I'll even play this back um, because I love the sound of my own voice uh, and see what we were actually talking about. So thanks for tuning in and hopefully see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>